right, guys. This video is where I used to live. It's um, it's kind of crazy. You know, a lot happens in. I moved from here in 2010. A lot happens in 11 years. A lot. I was just noticing that no one I know still lives in that neighborhood. When I used to live in that neighborhood, there was a lot of elderly people. Uh, and they were passing on while I was there. Because my next door neighbor, Omar, he had cancer. He died. And then another lady, another husband, he died. And it was just movement. Movement. So a lot happens in 10 years. So... Uh, you know, a lot can happen in three years, which is the, the principle of um, basis of my thesis. That if you start a small business part time in your spare time, you're keeping your job, you're not quitting your job. And then you go ahead and build this up. You will be blown away what you can do in three years. It will literally blow you away. All right. So let's get into this wonderful bean footage. This is where my warehouse used to be. I remember when I found the ad on Craigslist. We actually started off with this middle door. And that was like 3,000 square feet. And then we ended up moving down here to this warehouse which is because essentially all of these used to be one big warehouse but <clears throat> what they have done is they put them all together and we used to be down here which actually has one, two, has that door, that door, that door, and these two doors. So that's like 10,000 square feet. And I'm out here looking for a spot to put this car lot because it, it may be in the warehouse. And the folks who used to be here are no longer there. A lot has changed in 11 years, a lot. And there's the, the drone for people who are interested in the drone. I get a lot of questions about this drone. So essentially, what it does is it goes so far and it disconnects, right? So it has a return home feature so it doesn't fly away. So this is the drone I use. This is a 2017 drone. And I am probably going to upgrade it because one thing I found out with the brand new drone is it goes way further. And I don't know if the technology's gotten better, but I'm probably going, I may do this drone as a, as a giveaway, because I'm gonna start doing some type of contest. So this may be part of that contest. We may be doing that. But, you know, one of the things that is, um, really cool is once you get experience this experience can help you in the future because one of the things that people don't understand that people who don't try people who don't do anything people who actually just kind of sit on their hands and never really put forth any effort, they don't get this experience because, you know, I've never been in 
the car business before, right? Never been in it. However, I have been in business before. And that's going to help me tremendously because I know how to negotiate a lease. I know what to ask for. And for those of you in the art of holding and um, the corporate toolbox, you're going to get actual behind the scenes. I'm going to record phone calls with leasing agents because um, I'm probably going to have to get a spot that isn't a car lot. That's probably what it's going to have to be because the car spaces that are available, they're just, they're too big. I don't, I don't need that kind of space. I don't need that kind of, uh, I don't need that kind of space. And here is Mac Dad. <laughs> Fun fact, I'm getting ready to change out the um, emblem. And I'm going to put some black rims on this bad boy. Should ice it out very nicely. But, yeah. In this video, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff that um, pertaining to business, pertaining to business, and it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, this is where I matriculated to after East Point. Because I'm probably going to do the East Point uh, video just to show you. This would be the second stage before Sandy Springs. This is where I lived when I was in the storage auction business. And I want you just to, to actually think about the stark contrast of where I currently live. This was the second stage. And this, in my opinion, is a pretty solid neighborhood. It is nothing, because probably what I'm gonna do is the West End, and then I'm probably gonna do East Point to kind of show you the journey that I transitioned from. Because uh, when I moved to this neighborhood, I was thrilled, you know, it was, uh, it was very, very different. It was, you know, I mean, God, like it is cause I was there the other day and literally no one that I knew was still living in the neighborhood. Literally all of these houses were flipped. Now, when I used to live here, a lot of the, my neighbors were old and they were the original inhabitants of these houses and they were passing on when I lived there. Uh, my next door neighbor, Omar, he developed cancer. He died, at, I think at 84 and all around in the cut, these were older people who had been in the neighborhood for a while and I'm just you know <clears throat> like I said this is stage two this is stage two this isn't um, the beginning stages because what I'm going to do like I said I'm going to go to the west end and I'm going to show you where the journey started and then I'm going to do east point because I feel that this perspective would be helpful for folks because you can watch my rich people of Atlanta videos and you can see the big dynamic change. And I didn't even know they had a pool. That's very interesting. You know, this drone, it, it allows me to peek into people's backyards. 
to see things that I normally would not see. And um, it's kind of funny what is going on because essentially um, this is a working class neighborhood. This is Stone Mountain, Georgia. And when I was living in this neighborhood, there used to be a Target, which now is a storage facility. And there is now an Amazon facility that that used to be just raw land. They built that Amazon facility. So all of this has happened 2010. So a lot has happened in 11 years. And I want you guys to really think about your next three years because a lot of change can happen because I, I was just in the neighborhood and I was really just stunned that there was no one that was living there and my old house there's a, a group of people because there was like three cars out there and Omar his wife I don't know where she went to because after he died she was still in that house I don't know where she went to and you know it is really intriguing to see because you know this this is something else that was going on out there um it's a very as you can see it's very dense the houses are really close together and there's a lot of houses and one of the things is the traffic out there because it it was it was saturday like 5 p.m because when i was out here uh, getting ready to do the drone footage I had left my um, scan card. So I had to go to Best Buy to get a new one because it would have just been way much, way quicker than to come all the way back home. And I just noticed that there was literally congestion and traffic everywhere. And it was a little frustrating because I'm not used to that because, see, one of the things that happens when you live in a wealthier neighborhood is you have more space unless you know because um just riding around here i never run into that level of congestion that i ran into in stone mountain never run into it i don't care monday through sunday never run into it never run into these little traffic jams because essentially Stone Mountain is very, very, very dense. Um, you would go out to Stone Mountain, Latonia. Um, I don't know in Conyers. I, I never lived out there. But this was, you know, it, it got me to thinking. Um, when I was um, in the storage auction business, I used to have to roll out at six o'clock in the morning because the traffic on Highway 78 was a monster. And I had to hit Highway 78, I had to hit 285, and if the auction was in Alpharetta, then I had to go to 400. So I had a pocket of traffic in 278. I had a pocket of traffic in um, 285, and I had a pocket of traffic in I didn't even know any of this stuff was here. I didn't even know this reservoir pool was here. And this is the Amazon facility, which, you know, it looks to be brand new. I don't know when it was built, but it wasn't there when I was in Stone Mountain. This is a brand new facility. And this was just empty land when I lived out there. There was nothing there. It was just empty land, raw land. And Amazon has made someone very, very rich when they bought this land to build this facility. And I, I would assume it's a, just a shipping facility. And literally, they have these all over the place. It is really, really crazy. Um, essentially, when I was living in Stone Mountain, this is when, because I was in East Point when I was in the commercial office furniture business. That's when I did GC Solutions 
And then when I got full fledged into the storage auction business, because, you know, I had worked a job, so I was able to get a mortgage really easily because I had, you know, tax forms and stuff. So getting the house was like very, very simple process. But this is where I stayed until about 2010. And then I moved to Sandy Springs and I've been out here ever since. And what I've done is I have moved up within Sandy Springs. I started off in an apartment because I, I really, after my, my partner Francine died, I really just was, my mind was blown. I didn't really want to have to deal with the issues of having the house. The house had a septic tank that would back up on occasion and I would have to have the people come pump it out and all this other stuff. So uh, I got rid of the house, moved to Sandy Springs and I moved to an apartment then I moved to a townhouse. Then I moved to a house with a pool. Then ultimately I ended up here. And one of the things that I've begun to understand is the, the trajectory. Cause I want you guys to understand that you can do what I did, but you gotta have the understanding that it's going to take time you know it's going to take time and i think um like this house with the white car there's new people there uh this house with the truck in front of it there's a little guy i actually was talking to him he came out and th this is something else that happened every time i was like parked somewhere and i was there for a long period of time Someone came over to me and talked to me about the Porsche. That doesn't really happen out here because, I mean, Porsches are like a dime a dozen out here. There, there's typically on a summer day, a lot of people who have the convertible model of my car will come out and they're like literally everywhere. So the, it's very common to see my type of car in this neighborhood. But in Stone Mountain, it's not that common literally uh this guy who drives this truck he came over nice little dude uh went to the quick trip to get some gas another dude came over i was at the warehouse someone else <clears throat> actually just pulled up in the parking lot it's like man that's nice you know if you don't mind me asking how much that cost you and everything and then you know, i got this the question of like what do you do and i was like full-time youtuber and that's like really really and you know uh, part of this journey got me to realizing that once I start this dealership that I am going to be interacting or interfacing with a lot of people of the strata. These are going to be my customer base. This is who I'm going to be dealing with. And, you know, it was uh, really interesting because I'm going to have a similar customer base that I had when I was in the storage auction business, a very similar base. And, you know, I used to back up the van <laughs> and unload stuff. Like I used to drive through the, there, that's the house. You know, like I said, it's a nice little house. It's probably worth like 200 K. I got in that house for like one, one over one ten. So if I had stayed in that house, I would have seen like a hundred thousand dollar gain in about 11, 12 years. But I rolled out and this is my house. This is my they've done like someone moved in and apparently this person he has a little money because they've done a lot of work to that house. And they have a truck, a motorcycle and some other things going on. But one of the things I want you guys to understand is you can make this journey. You can do it, but you must have the appropriate mindset and you've got to understand it's going to take some time. It's just going to take some time. This is not something that you're going to be able to do in a few months or really a few years because essentially 
my journey has taken me, let's see, go from 1999 to East Point, then here. Now, also, this warehouse is not that far from that house. It's not that far at all. And I estimate that on this side, because at one point, all of this used to just be one big warehouse. Um, Mr. Sam, he built this. You know, one of the things uh, I learned a lot from him, he built this warehouse. It was him and another Russian immigrant that literally built out the Stone Mountain Corridor. And when you build, you get it cheaper. And, you know, this warehouse, I know for a fact, is in a trust fund. It's in a trust fund for his two children. So there is no telling because, I mean, the, work, the rent that we were paying, I was paying 2500 for the front, 10,000 square feet. So let's just say on each side, there was 25,000 square feet. The whole warehouse was 50,000 square feet. So this one building, when it was fully rented, was probably making 25, 25, five, 12, 25,000 a month, fully rented. This one building that was paid off. And I want you guys to, you know, cause everyone's trying to do something hip, slick, cool, sweet. There is a lot of money in the industrial sector. There's a lot of money. Uh, I've noticed that there were some businesses that were still in business. that are still in business today when I was there and one of the things is this, this corridor has changed because uh, one of the reasons I was out here is I may have to, because essentially I'm going to use an internet model for the dealership. It, I'm not going to be dependent upon people driving by because uh, essentially you're just waiting for people to say, hey, I need a car. I'm going to be pushing and advertising heavily on the internet. So it, it kind of matters if my location is somewhere easy to get to, but also I am not trying to, um, be all over the world, you know, essentially from my house to Stone Mountain, it's like a 35 minute, I think from my house to my new house, from my current house to the old house was like a 40 minute drive. So, you know, I don't necessarily want to have um, a location in this area. Uh, I really would like to try to do it in Beaufort Highway. Uh, I would really like to try to have it over there where I could um, be doing certain things in that area. But uh, this would be a good location because there's a lot of car dealerships out here there's a lot but there is a lot of money in the industrial sector and i feel that there are so many people who want to be an internet or a single person because essentially like when i hire the dealership i'm gonna have to hire people right off the gate uh, as soon as i get a location i'm hiring a salesman right out the gate because essentially I got to create systems and processes and I got to train someone how to do all of this stuff. So when I like, let's say I don't want to work on the weekend, I got to have someone open up the dealership, be able to handle the money and all this other stuff. I got to have that set up for someone to come in and be able to run that without my input. I got to build it that way from the beginning. 
that's how I got to build it. I cannot go ahead because essentially what I will be doing is just building myself a trap. And this is one of the reasons that out of the 30 million small businesses in America, like, like 32 million small businesses in America, 25 of them, 25 million of them have a single owner. 25 million of them have a single owner which means that they're self-employed and they really don't have a true business because let me go ahead and kind of peep into my head like i go ahead and build this dealership i'm going to have to build systems and processes where everyone like every function of that dealership is going to have to be handled by someone uh, I'll spend the next two to three years getting it off the ground. And after that, I want to train someone, get a general manager who's going to open, hire, run the whole dealership. And literally, I will never have to step foot in that dealership. That is how I plan on building this. Like the next three years, I will be heavily, uh, my input would be over everything. But the goal is in three years, that if I wanted to never step foot in that dealership, other than maybe to sign some papers and stuff, like let's say I wanted to take a two week vacation. I could take a two week vacation and my dealership will be making money with me being on vacation and I'm gonna come back to checks in the bank. I'm gonna come back to money. That's how I want to build this dealership and I wanna automate as much stuff as possible and like I said, um, pretty much the first few months, I'm going to get three employees because, you know, essentially I got to get a crew of uh, temporary people because when we go to auction, you know, we're looking at buying 25, 30 cars at a time. So we got to transport those cars from the auction house to the dealership. I don't know if it would make sense to drive them all or to get a a car carrier that can carry like 12 cars at a time and just bust them over that way. I don't really know what's going to be the best option for that. So <clears throat> this is kind of wrapping this up. Uh, for those of you who want to get into the art of holding the price did not go up for the month of April. I made that command decision because at the end of April, there's going to be a lot of training in the fast start boot camp. And for those folks who want to get into it, you can go below, get on the payment plan, or you can do the one and done. And the price is going to go up in May. It's not going to go up in April. It's going to go up in May because you will get to see me because I will be documenting the journey on YouTube. But for the folks who are in the art of holding or the corporate toolbox, you will get the down and dirty details of me opening up this dealership. You will get the recorded phone calls of me talking to leasing agents because, you know, I've never run a car dealership before. I don't know anything about that business, but the surrounding elements of business, like how to rent a space, what questions to ask. Uh, I do know that how to set up a merchant account. I do know how to do that. And you will get all of those juicy details because what I'm going to do is create like a separate portion called the opening of a car dealership. So the link is below for those of you who want to be in part of the art of holding.